Genetic engineering is not some sci-fi future medicine. Thousands of people are accessing this revolutionary technology today. Since the first FDA-approved genetic modification to cure sickle cell in 2023, over a dozen more single mutation cures have been FDA-approved. And with powerful new AI tools, advances are happening so fast, you may soon find yourself asking your doctor if genetic enhancement is right for you. Which brings me to Liz Parrish, the founder of BioViva Sciences. See, curing a disease is one thing, but BioViva's goal is a cure for aging itself. And beyond that, human enhancement. What my company specializes in cr is creating viral vectors, things that used to be viruses, now they're attenuated vectors. We design them with therapeutic genes that combat the hallmarks of aging. So you may also remember Liz Parrish from 10 years ago when she was the first person to genetically enhance herself to express more folistatin, which would increase muscle growth. And here she is in her most recent keynote looking absolutely enormous. Peter Diamandis is 6'4". <laughs> I'm kidding, I, <laughs> I have no idea how tall he is, but Christ, she looks formidable. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna highlight the most exciting results from Liz's personal genetic enhancements, BioViva's progress with hundreds of willing participants, and I'm gonna get some added perspective from biotech founder, Sebastian Brunemeyer. I was in the PhD program at Oxford in biochemistry of aging. I left to launch a biotech company that co-founded it called uh, Cambrian Bio. Technically, as of today, we are the most clinically advanced longevity company uh, with two clinical stage assets. Sebastian is also a co-founder of Long Game Ventures, helping to fund many early stage longevity focused biotech companies. And our talk definitely hit some wild territory. Fix some skin cells, clone a person, create a backup body version of yourself without a cortex. So it's not conscious, kidney, liver, heart, lungs, whatever you need. We should clone geniuses. Right? If everyone did embryo selection, we could increase IQ. Talking with Sebastian was extremely fun and exciting. And the only way to watch the whole thing is to become a member of our Patreon. Find that link in the description. But right now, let's discuss the present reality of genetic engineering and how people today are attempting to live longer by becoming GMO humans. Welcome to Longevity Science News, I'm Emmett Short. Before we get into the episode, I wanna to mention today's sponsor, the Hume Body Pod, because I have been using it and it's great. In 30 seconds, it measures 45 plus metrics at 98% DEXA accuracy. Body fat, muscle mass, visceral fat, bone density, hydration, BMR, BMI, protein, heart variability, and more. It can be very motivating to see those changes represented in data. Also, let's say you're spending a lot of money on something like peptides. You wanna know those things are working. It syncs via Bluetooth to the Hume Health app, integrating with Apple Health, Fitbit, or Garmin. And a premium subscription adds AI coaching and a nutrition plan. This is far more than just a scale. It's a deep insight ecosystem. You can get a massive discount on this by using my link down below and the code longevity, which actually stacks with Hume's current sale for up to 50% off. That deal is only valid for seven days, so act fast. And if you're in the US, it's also HSA, FSA eligible. So you might actually get it covered for free by your health insurance. All right, let's move on with the episode. Today, we're talking about genetic modifications. And before we start talking about all the not yet FDA approved enhancements, I think it's worth taking a second to look at this list of now FDA approved, basically, cures that have been approved in the last two years. So listen to what Peter Diamandis has to say about this. It's a revolution. It's biblical. It's a single injection and you are cured, right? This is not ameliorating chronic pain over the time. This is an injection and you are cured of your disease that for perhaps hundreds of generations had plagued your bloodline. And I mean, I don't know why people aren't jumping up and down in the streets with joy at this. This is this Thank is miraculous. You. Yes, this is incredible progress, extremely exciting. Now, let's move on and talk about the enhancements, also exciting, more muscle, higher IQ, age reversal. And let's say you disregard how new and complex the science is. You're not concerned with anything going wrong like what you've seen in the movies. Well, you'd still have to figure out how to even get access to these not yet FDA approved enhancements. 
One way is to start a biotech company. I stand here today because I am a GMO. And I would argue that most people in this room will opt to be GMOs as well. Probably, but I'm still glad that you're going first. I'm gonna link Liz's full BioViva keynote in the description if you'd like to watch the entire thing. In this video, we're gonna talk about Parrish's results from the multiple gene enhancements that she's used on herself. But first, the most interesting part of the keynote to me was just how many non-biotech founders have gotten access to BioViva's tech. We can lengthen telomeres. Over 100 people have taken that gene therapy. We can increase muscle mass. We probably have over 200 people who have taken that gene therapy. We can cognitively enhance you. I'll show some data from one of our studies, and we've probably had about 150 par people participate in that. Now, you may be wondering, are these just vanity enhancements, or do they treat any disease? If they're not FDA approved, how are people even getting access? Well, for every advancement BioViva chooses, it has an ulterior motive. Now, all of the genes that I showed you will actually help children, and we can help children for free by scaling to an aging population. The thing that's made gene therapy unaffordable is having a very small market. We've done a scale analysis, and we can get this technology down exponentially. Okay, that's something I can root for helping kids and getting the cost down. And all you have to do is take your life in your own hands. Check and check. Now, how are people getting access? My company actually licenses the technology out. We can't treat patients. The only treat patient we ever treated was myself. Yep, if you're not the head of a biotech company, the not yet approved gene enhancements are only available through medical tourism. If you don't wanna be protected by the FDA, you're gonna to have to travel abroad. And these are some of our licensing partners. On the bottom left, that's Integrative Health Systems. They've treated over 300 patients. They're a medical concierge service and they do an excellent job. They have 13 doctors and they've never had a major adverse event. We are super careful, but we're not so careful that we don't give therapeutic doses. So if you want a therapeutic dose without an adverse event, knock on wood, that's the place to go. Integrated Health Systems, IHS, is a network of doctors in clinics outside the US that carry out experimental gene therapies and share their data with BioViva to help accelerate the development of these therapies. According to a 2023 Wired article, patients apply for treatments via the IHS website. When they do, they're told that safety is not guaranteed and that neither, crucially, is efficacy. Oh, and by the way, the prices start at 75,000, no refunds. Look, this is a complicated issue. Obviously, marketing unproven cures to healthy people is something that needs to be regulated by the FDA. But if you're dying and nothing else has worked, should you really be forced to travel abroad to try something new that could work? But what if you just want to try something because, you know, you want to be jacked and brilliant? If you're informed of the risks, I mean, should you have the right to try? Right to try laws are state and federal laws Trump enacted in 2018 aimed to help eligible terminally ill patients access experimental drugs and devices that have passed phase one of a clinical trial, but are not yet FDA approved. But there's a push to expand these laws. If you'd like to see an even more in-depth conversation on how right to try laws are progressing, I do have another talk with Montana State Senator Ken Bogner on the Patreon as well. So the thing is, our current laws are kind of messed up. In the United States, if you're over 80, you don't qualify for a clinical trial. Can you imagine? There are people living to 120. I mean, the, our priorities, our values, and our purpose have to change. Yeah, how does that make sense? The people that need it most can't volunteer for a trial? Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. But now, let's see how Liz Parrish's personal genetic enhancements have worked out for her. First up, the folistatin treatment from 2016. These are my thighs before and after therapy. So before therapy, I was a runner. I ran three to five miles a day. After therapy, due to the media catching hold that we had done the first treatment for biological aging, I was on a lot of planes, didn't sleep well. I still gained muscle mass and lost intermuscular fat. 
And we see this across the board with patients, uh, very beneficial. Wow, I wonder how people will use this for the betterment of humanity. Brazilian booty lift enhancement technology. <laughs> you know, basically you, you inject the oh, fall yeah. gene therapy into the bum and yeah. it grows the muscle. You can do it in any muscle, but that's probably gonna be the first use case. Sorry, wrong clip. Uh, here we go. This boy on the left has muscular dystrophy. He's having a really hard time climbing the stairs. This is him three months after gene therapy. No side effects. The side effects of folistatin are actually potentially protection against prostate cancer, breast cancer, metabolic disorder. It lowers inflammatory markers. It's a beautiful gene therapy and it's why you see it sometimes out in the wild. Folistatin gene therapy is still being studied, but it's not currently on a path toward FDA approval as far as I could find in my research. So yeah, start planning your trip to the Bahamas. Next up, Liz told us she has also undergone multiple doses of a gene therapy to lengthen her telomeres. These are my telomeres. And I took the gene therapy in this study that we published twice. I've taken it again since then. Telomerase reverse transcriptase lengthens the caps at the ends of your chromosomes, giving your cells more ability to divide and regenerate your body. And in this study, watching me over a myriad of years, and yes, my telomeres are longer since this study, my telomere length got longer by 5.3 years for every year I lived. This gene therapy would be fantastic for kids with progeria. The hallmark of their disease is, is rapidly shortening telomeres and they die of aging associated diseases really young. Can I just say the framing of helping sick kids as the real motivation for becoming immortal? Genius. The people with clipboards outside Whole Foods really need to take notes. Oh, helping sick kids and live forever? Where do I sign? Okay, this next enhancement may be the most interesting. Clotho also has the potential to correlate with an increased IQ score. Yes, absolutely. Hold up, how smart does it make you? What we see in healthy cohort is an increase in IQ scores of a standard deviation across the board. Which is typically how much of an IQ number? That's 10 to 14 points. Wow, 10 to 14 points? Triple digits, here I come. And for what that can mean for a low functioning person is becoming a bit higher functioning. For a higher functioning person, it can tip them over into more abilities. And for a really intelligent person, it can tip them over into genius. The graph on the left is me after I've already received gene therapy. I already received gene therapy, I got my levels taken and I was in the 90th percentile for Clotho. And then we went ahead and did a specialized protocol to help us redose the gene therapy. And so the other graph on the right you see is me after, and that's the increase in Clotho levels in my body. And they have since increased again because I have crazy friends. <laughs> and we went ahead and did it again to see if the third time round we could do it. And so do you feel smarter? Um, well, after I was able to finish some of my studies, do a full-time job, and I have five other companies, <laughs> I don't think I could have done that before. Interestingly, I also talked with Sebastian about IQ, and the impact of intelligence increase on quality of life is actually pretty huge. High IQ predicts outcomes in basically everything good. Basically everything good in terms of health outcomes, life satisfaction, career success, earnings, uh, school progress, even probability of divorce, even physical attractiveness. There's a really good book called Hive Mind, Why Your Nation's IQ Matters More Than Your Own, which is small differences in national IQ, you know, like Japan is at like 105 or something higher than, you know, around 97 in the US predicts significant improvements in society, crime rates, education rates, pace of technological advancement, mm. social trust, all of this stuff is heavily predicted by IQ. And so even small differences multiplied by the population, it really adds up. In today's world where we are in a literal intelligence arms race with AI, maybe it also makes sense to fast track a gene enhancement that could increase biological intelligence. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, this cognitive enhancement is not just for healthy people, 
BioViva did a study on how it helps dementia patients. We were the first company in the world to treat dementia patients uh, with suspected Alzheimer's, and we treated them with two gene therapies. We came under fire uh, by the media. <laughs> you can imagine uh, these people dying of a, an incredibly terrible, debilitating disease that makes it you lose oneself. You, you can't remember who the people are around you or most of your historical memories. And, uh, but we did it anyway. We knew that was going to happen. Uh, we used two gene therapies in them and we increased their cognitive scores. And we used two different types of tests to do that. And not only that, we actually reduced their biological age in their shortest telomeres. That means their immune cells, their immune senescence went down. So a byproduct of making these five dementia patients smarter was that they also built better immune systems? Crazy. Now for perhaps the most impressive thing about gene therapy, it can be personalized specifically to you. We've also created probably 15 therapies off the cuff for patients who were going to die without access, who knew their genetic components but didn't qualify for a clinical trial. They created bespoke gene therapies for patients. Now she didn't give us any outcomes on these patients, but I just think it's cool that this is actually happening today. Yes, you have to travel abroad and sign away your protections, but for people who have no other option, this provides a little hope. And the potential for this field is nothing short of complete control of human aging and evolution. Liz closes with this. I want to leave you with something very important that I don't think anyone in this room needs, but often I speak at events that don't understand the premise of why I get on stage, why I take gene therapies, and why I do the things that I do. I get all dressed up to represent the over 100,000 people that will die today. The 36 million people that will die this year if we don't change. And change isn't going to come from safe areas. Change starts in your mind and then it goes to your actions. I'm not gonna leave my kids with the diseases that we died of, that hopefully we won't die of. We have to band together and realize that the only thing, the only place that change is rejected is the cemetery. And that's where it belongs. So here's where we are. Liz Parrish is aging backwards at 5X the normal rate by some measures. She's maintained and improved muscle mass without consistent exercise. She's cognitively enhanced and she's not alone. Hundreds and hopefully soon thousands of people are being treated through licensing partners for gene enhancement and adding to the very crucial data that we need to help the sick. Way more is coming soon, but it's pretty cool that a lot of it is actually here. The question is whether you're gonna wait for it to be mainstream or become an early adopter. What do you think? Leave a comment, let me know. Don't forget to check out the interviews on Patreon or as a YouTube member. This is Longevity Science News. I'm Emmett Short, stay young. Mm -hmm.